Hey everybody, it is Tanya, Thrifty Treasures. Welcome to another episode of Antique Booth Talk. And today we are gonna be discussing summer strategies and this is episode number seven. So Seven already? I know, right? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> So, Jen, you want to introduce yourself? Well, who doesn't know me? <laughs> I am Jen, also known as the Pudgy Picker here on YouTube. Um, I have an antique booth, been doing it for about 10 years, long years. Long <laughs> and uh, I also sell on eBay and, of course, my YouTube channel. So, ready to talk. <laughs> Tammy? And you guys are getting getting to know me. <laughs> I'm Tammy, and my YouTube is uh, Tam's Place. And I've been doing having an antique booth for probably a little over a year and a half, and learned a lot over the past year and a half. And uh, yeah, so I'm ready to go too. <laughs> oh my goodness, we have Mr. Pudgy Picker in the house. Uh oh, you better behave yourself, man. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Mr. Pudgy Picker. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I told him he could watch, but he's got to behave. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's awesome when our loved ones support us. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's my biggest fan. And I tell you, I couldn't do half of what I do without him, certainly. Oh, that's so sweet. I feel the same way about my other half. <laughs> mm -hmm. Me too. <laughs> so, um, today we're just going to be kind of talking about a hodgepodge of things. I know that we did miss... Um, our last uh, show for May, but we are back here and um, ready to talk about summer and all things that are going on in our booths. So um, how, how are sales? Let's talk about sales first. How are y'all sales doing this summer? Are we off to a slow start, fast start? They're pretty good, but you know, it's the summer slump. So I, I know a lot of places in the country have been experiencing really hot weather and we have here in Northeastern Ohio, certainly. <clears throat> so it's been uh, pretty hot and I mean, it's not even summer yet. And I think till tomorrow is summer, first day of summer. So I think a lot of people are out doing things, doing their yard work, going on vacations. Kids are all out of school now. So Summer uh, is always a little bit slower on every platform that I sell on, but it has been pretty good. It hasn't like dropped off like significantly. So I'm glad of that. Yeah, I agree. I feel, I feel about the same way. I feel like, you know, I was able to pick up, um, you know, a decent check uh, for last month. So and still pay my rent also. Um, and, you know, we're getting ready to have that really big sale uh, in July. And I'm going to blow it out at 50%. So <laughs> the last time I did that, you guys, and I think November and December, I made a really good amount of money doing that. And um, it's, it's funny because, like, I was just talking with my mother-in-law this past weekend, and she was telling me, we went, over, we went over to her antique mall where she has a booth with her best friend. And she was telling me about this lady that has a booth next to them that she is the one that does the best in the entire mall over there. And it's because she prices her stuff low. So she moves a lot of inventory that way. So I'm going to try and copy yeah. her model. And once the sales over in July for August, I'm just going to start pricing stuff a little bit cheaper and experimenting just to move it out, you know, like at least try to double my money or get things at better prices, but just have cheaper prices. You know, and if you do that, people get to know that that's the case and you will have repeat customers because they'll always know they can come to you and get something really cool for a good price. Right. So Tammy, how about you? How are sales? Um, well, May was pretty slow and um, I have a feeling because of graduation and Mother's Day and you know all the things that go on during May, um, that probably had an effect on things. But so far for June, it's looking really good. <laughs> really good. It's looking real good. Sales have been very good for June. So, so what did you? What are you doing different? Is there something you're doing different? Um, not really. Just you know, continuing to work my booth and um, you know, changing things around. Um, I did a, a pretty big change not too long ago, and um, you know, as far as like 
giving my booth a whole new look and um, changed up the back of that cabinet and got rid of all of my jewelry so I could hang some pictures and, you know, different things. Utilize that a little bit different than all that jewelry. Yes, I need to go get caught up on your videos for sure because I'm definitely interested to see what you've been doing. <laughs> You're always doing something. You're so good about working your booth. You really are. Well, um, I try to go there at least once a week and add a few new things and switch some stuff around. Um, when I first started my booth, I was going about twice a week and I've kind of slacked off a little bit, but you know, sales have been pretty good just going once a week. So that's kind of been my strategy just going once a week and adding a few things. You know, I, did a complete uh, clear out of my garage here recently of several things that had not sold. And I just, I was going to take them to a thrift store, but I decided, you know, my mom's going to have a garage sale and I would rather just give them to her and let her try to make some money off of it than to give it to the thrift store first. If she can't make any money off of it, then she can take it to the thrift store. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the, the, uh, always advising people work the booth. Um, my sister and I that share our booth, we go once a week. So that's, that is really important. Um, I'm always taking stuff out that's new, um, rearranging stuff, redoing, talking to customers while you're doing that is really cool. Cause some people say, Oh, is this your booth? And then we get talking and I say, what kind of things are you looking for? And, you know, just kind of pick their brain and see, you know, that if I need to tweak what I'm looking for, because uh, it's really nice to get to know your customers and, you know, to hear what you're doing right. And other people say, I don't know why you put that down there. I got bad knees. And <laughs> so you hear a couple of <laughs> things like that too. But, you know, it's just one of those things that getting to know your customer, that's, that's half the game. So. Yeah, that's great advice for sure. Definitely talking to people, seeing what they're looking for. And I was going to tell you guys, another thing that I've noticed that sells well for me, and I've probably mentioned this as far as plush, but like um, the sock monkeys, they always sell well for me. So when I see them at the thrift stores, I pick them up. And also Raggedy Ann and Andy plush sell. So okay. see those, pick them up for sure. Yeah, yeah, see, the only issue with anything that has stuffing uh, furniture, uh, that kind of thing. We, uh, Ohio State or Ohio law is that we have to pay or that we have to have things sprayed because we, you know, the bed bug hole issue. So that is something our owner does and he just gives us at cost what it costs him to do it. So whenever I buy anything like that, I have to be conscious that that is an additional cost that I'm going to have to absorb. So if it's worth it or not, so that's something I do. So I do not sell that many plush, uh, but the sock monkeys, they've been around a long time. So that's probably good advice if you don't have that issue like I do at my mall. Yeah, that's so crazy. I always forget that you guys have that issue up there. Yeah, we sense? don't. Uh, we don't sell clothes in our booth either. And I noticed through uh, the Antique Booth Talk, the Facebook group, there's a lot of people who uh, say, oh, yeah, I'm going to try clothes or this or that. We can't sell clothes. Uh, it is a special permit through our city. And in fact, the entire city that our uh, booth or our mall is in, there's no thrift stores. <laughs> so it must be quite costly to have that uh, to have that permit through the city. So, yes. How much do you sell your sock monkeys for, Tanya? Uh, well, usually I can pick them up for a dollar or less, and I'll put like ten bucks on them. If they're a little bit bigger, I might put like fourteen ninety nine. I used to make uh, sock monkeys. I haven't made any in a while, though, um, and I would make them custom for different uh, ball teams. That's awesome. I remember you telling me about that. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't made it in a long time though because. You know the time, the amount of time it takes to make one. I can't get really get my the money for my time back out of it. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the thing with those crafts. You know, you really got to enjoy doing it. And then, you know, if you're going to sell it, you have to, I guess, be aware, conscious of if you're going to really make a profit off of it or not. You know. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, if you can find even even stuff like the uh, the air plants and the uh, bamboo that I do. 
Um, I've been buying my bamboo off of Amazon, so I get a really good price on it. And then I can pick up, you know, the containers for maybe a dollar, dollar fifty at the most uh, at garage sales and at thrift stores. And that doesn't take but a minute to slap those together. So yeah, your time and what you're putting into the item, you have to balance that out, see if it's worth it. Yeah, and I noticed here in the uh, chat, Tracy says, I sold t a total of four vintage aluminum lawn chairs in the past month for $35 each. Just placed another one in there. And that's true. I've sold lawn a lawn chair, those vintage ones before too. Have you guys ever sold those? The vintage um, lawn chairs? I haven't. My boost isn't big enough really to put big furniture or anything. So it's kind of hard for me to sell any kind of big items. Yeah, these you can like fold up and probably just like set them up against the wall. Um, but they're, the web. yeah, they're really collectible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the time of year I find them. I, I do. If they're in good condition, I'll pick them up and sell them. And garage sale season, I'm seeing them for a dollar or two. So this is the time of year to be picking them up. Definitely. Yeah. I've been picking up so much stuff. I've been parking my car outside and putting stuff in my garage. <laughs> Oh yeah, the are plentiful right now, you guys. I mean, big time. <laughs> I can't get stuff priced soon enough before it's the next weekend again. You know, so um, I know I I I go garage sale on Thursday, and if yes. I get the stuff out of my car before I go to the thrift store on Monday, sometimes <laughs> I'll go out and I'll go. Oh, I forgot all this stuff is in here. Oh my gosh! So yeah, there's a constant parade. <laughs> Yes, that's exactly a good word for it. Parade. Yes. That's what it is. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not the only one. And you know, as a reseller, I constantly have those little red plastic um, razors in my pocket all the time because I'm, you know, as soon as I come in, I like to de-sticker all that stuff and try and get the price on it for the booth and at least get it in the garage. So when I am ready to go, I can just grab it, throw it in the trunk and get out of here and, you know, Get it up there. Yeah, and I advise people if you buy this is a, a personal experience I've had. I got a little terrarium uh, that was like mostly all glass and it had a tray on the bottom, so they taped the top at the thrift store. I had this in my basement for almost a year and I thought, you know, I should get that out. It was an absolute nightmare. This thin clear packing tape to take it off, to pick that all off, and then the sticky. So that stuff, if it's on there for a while, or the price tags are on yeah. there a while, it's going to be ten times more work. So that's true. And here they are. That, oh my gosh, do so it! These Just, things, you guys, are the best. They're little um, red razors. They're not going to cut you, and they get the price tags off garage sales and um, Goodwill really easy. <laughs> so, oh, I hadn't seen those before. Yeah, you get like a whole bag of them. I got these on um, Amazon. Oh. I think I got them on Amazon or eBay. So, but yeah, I love these things. They are the best. Yeah, plus you have so many things you just don't want to scratch up with mm -hmm. a razor blade. And anything sharp, I've got to cut myself. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, exactly. I'm the same way. <laughs> yeah, so that's pretty much, those are very good. And they're not expensive either, so. No, they're really up. cheap. Definitely. Yeah. Well, I have an update on a bolo. <laughs> Ooh, a bolo. Ooh, bolo. Bolo. <laughs> okay, so the um, Longa Burger baskets. <laughs> I don't know if you all saw my video that I did that haul from that one lady's house where I bought like 60 Longa Burger baskets from her. No, oh my wow. goodness, Tammy, really? Yeah, I paid like $100 for 60 of them. That's Holy amazing. Cow. And I've already sold uh let's see i sold a well i got or like a wrought iron stand i've already sold the stand and one basket and between those two i've already made all my money back on all the baskets on just wow. two baskets on a basket and a wrought iron stand oh my gosh that's amazing <laughs> so, wow. and I've got is she a dealer for them or how did she end up with so many of the baskets he was a collector and she just got tired of collect. I mean, as a collector, I would think she would know the value of each and every one of those baskets. She just was tired of them. And when I went up there, she, cause I asked her, I said, how much if I buy all the baskets? 
And she said, well, I was thinking about the small ones, like maybe $2 each. And there was a lot more small ones than there were big ones. So I just threw out a price at her and I said, well, how about $100 for all of them? And she said, actually, that's what I was thinking. That sounds good. And I was like, okay. <laughs> wow. Let's pack see, it I up. See, I do yep. see, I don't see a lot of longer burger. I do see them at garage sales and they usually have that, that infamous readout from eBay or oh, they're yeah. just so, they're just so high. I don't even mess with them, yeah. but uh, you know, to get that kind of price. Oh man. Done. So was your truck loaded down or what? Oh my gosh, the bed of my truck was full. <laughs> more stuff than just the longer burger baskets. Like I bought I'm glad you had a truck. from this woman. Yeah. And I've actually I've got a couple of people that have contacted me wanting to buy some of them. How did they find out you have them? Oh, through your YouTube channel, right? watching me on YouTube. Um, I have one lady that has, that's been purchasing from me through YouTube that um, she's purchased from me a couple times and she's actually interested in buying all of them. So we're kind of, you know, back and forth in negotiation to see, you know, I need to find out, I need to do some more research because what I've been doing is when I get ready to take some to my antique booth, I'll just do the research right then, figure out what I'm going to price them for. And then, yeah, Put a price on it take it to my booth i didn't i haven't done research on every single one of them and priced them all um like i said i just do it as i put them in my booth so how far so away I'm, does she live she lives somewhere up in new york wow yeah but I, I wonder like if some of them are like are really really collectible like i don't know if i could just like sell the lot without doing research on all of them because there might be that one gem in there that's worth a whole lot right yeah and like I said, you know, I, I had told her that, you know, I haven't really done any research on it. So, you know, until I do some research and know exactly, you know, of course, if she wants to buy all of them, then of course, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to give her a deal because she's buying all of them, you know? <laughs> right. So yeah. I was trying to decide, and I wonder what you all think about this. I was trying to decide whether or not to sell them all or to keep them. So that way I have inventory for my booth. You know, if I sell them all, then that's a bunch of inventory. I've just gotten rid of all at once. But if I've got a buyer to get rid of all of them, what do you guys think? I don't know. Well, if you have a, if you have the room for them and you're going to sell them pretty much what you know they're worth, if you have the room, then set on. I mean, if you have just, if you're up to your eyeballs and something's got to go, and you know you're going to get a decent price. You're def you're going to get less if you sell them all together. But right. if you have if you, if I had the room, I would hang on to them. But that's that's me personally. Well, I currently have the room, but <laughs> by the end of garage sale season, I'm <laughs> you might be willing to bargain. <laughs> right. yeah, exactly. Tell her to contact you at the end of August. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Then Tam will be selling them for a buck a piece. Get them out of here. <laughs> but the thing about it is, too, we have um, in my antique mall, we have three or four uh, customers that come in there that are specific, specifically looking for Longaburger baskets. Yep. So. It sounds like you can pretty much name your price. I mean, well, but there are some other vendors down there that carry Longaburger. So. Well, what I would do is maybe if you had a little area that you could stage a few and maybe put a sign and say, uh, you know, something to the effect of, I have a lot of inventory. If there's anything in particular you're looking for, you know, uh, check up front and leave them a message and I'll, I'll let you know if I have it. So no, that's that good people, idea. yeah. So even if they're not looking for something specific, then they're like, oh, she has more. I'll keep checking back. So that would probably be a good idea. That's a good idea, Jen. I didn't think about that, but yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. But it does, they do, they take up a lot of space. And like I said, a lot of them that I have are smaller, but I do have some bigger ones. And um, actually I just took one down this past Monday, I think it was. And it was a rack, um, like a small baker's rack that you hang on the wall. And it uh -huh. had two baskets that went with it. And they have the they have the fabric liner. They have two of the plastic liners, and they both have the lids. 
So it's pretty much a complete set. And I wow. priced it for, I think I priced it for like $94. So we'll see. <laughs> but that I was going to confirm that the iron pieces are, that's the most sought after thing are the iron pieces. So if you're out there and you see any Longenberger iron pieces, pick them up. <laughs> right. Um, when I was at my mother-in-law's antique booth this past weekend, I took some pictures. Oh, here they are. And look, look how they, they hung these baskets. Can you see how they hung the baskets on their booth from the ceiling? They them on hooks. I've seen that before, baskets displayed like, like that. Yeah, it's, it's a good way to save some space in your booth, too. Of course, I, I don't know what you're doing. Because mine's, my booth's in the middle, and I don't have any way to put anything. If I had a, a, you know, one against the wall, I could probably do that, but I can't do that with There's no. What about a tight, like a, a real tight, uh, like string that you could run, like from, see how they just um, put it on top of the, uh, the structure there and they've got like some little hangers. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, the ceilings are really tall <laughs> where my antique booth is. <laughs> well, you got a husband with a ladder, don't you? <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. See, you start doing that. Then the, then the other people working at the antique mall will hate your guts. <laughs> <laughs> We've had people, I mean, you're trying to stuff as much as you can and, you know, go up yeah. and we've had trunks and things up high and they're like, you know, realize that, you know, you're putting stuff in there and it looks nice, but when somebody has to buy it, think of all the people who a lot of them are not young, you know, spring chickens are going to have to get up on a ladder and take that down. So, Yeah. And I don't know that that Judy would let me do something like that just because the ceilings are so tall and I don't have a booth on the wall. Um, it just it, it me of thinking about it just it wouldn't feasible. I, it wouldn't be feasible for me to do that. But but I love the idea. I mean, I wish I could do something like that and do something like above. You know, my my booth, but it's just it's not feasible. Yeah, I'm fortunate that I have, you know, a, a, the main wall and then I have the two side walls. Right. So the person that was there before me ran two by fours across and then at an angle. So I have, uh, they had some cup hooks just screwed in there and I've added so I can hang up, you know, uh, you know, bird feeders and wind chimes and I could even do baskets and such too. So that's nice to take advantage of that, you know, the vertical space. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I wish I had something like that. I guess I could get my husband up there with the ladder to rig me something, but yeah, I need to start picking up some baskets. See, we're just talking about how nice they are. We're going to be pushing the limits. <laughs> <laughs> you know, any, any spouse of a reseller, they either have to be in the game too, or they really, you know, are okay with what you do because we really put our spouses through a lot. There's just so much stuff coming in and going out and it's, it's a lot. I mean, as, as careful as I try to be, I have a, a piece of furniture with stuff stacked on it that I need to spray paint sitting in the garage. It's been there since last summer. It's like, I, he doesn't say anything and I'm like so grateful, but it's like, you know, every time I go out in the garage, it's looking at me. So it's right. like, you know, it's no matter how careful you are and how separated you try and keep that from your living space. It's a, it's really a tug of war all the time. Yeah. And like, I always got some project going on with spray paint, you know? <laughs> oh yeah. We got, I got white spray paint, black spray paint and you know, the gold, uh, anything comes in the house, yeah. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm good to go. So, I know. I love to spray paint stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, spray paint covers a multitude of sins. <laughs> it does. <laughs> okay, I have lost y'all. I'm trying to get a, a link here for everybody for those razors. People were asking about the razors in the um, chat. I tell you what, I will, as soon as the show's over, I'm going to go put a link down in the description box so you guys can come back afterwards and um, get that link and buy those if you'd like. Okay, there you guys are. <laughs> okay, so Jen, 
I, Jen, I wanted to ask you about your doll head planners. Did you ever put any in your booth? I have not yet. I just I bought a either. couple. I just bought a couple more dolls at a uh, garage sale a couple weeks ago, and they were like a quarter a piece. And I paid the lady, and I turned around. There was two women sitting there, and I started to walk up. She goes, "I'm so glad they're getting a good home." And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> I feel so terrible." It's like little do you know, I'm gonna go home and tear their heads off, you know. <laughs> So I literally have like this bucket container that has all the doll heads in it. So yeah, <laughs> I got them. I not, just, it's one more thing I got to do. I think I'm just going to get them and maybe do fake flowers in them because I kill plants and it's like, it's enough to keep the, uh, the air plants and the bamboo alive, let alone anything. Cause my booth is so far back. It gets no natural light. So I think I may just kind of, you know, zhuzh it up with some fake flowers and just go from there. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And yeah. also, um, look what Madeline uh, came up with. This is really cute. Let me show y'all. You said that they also make really good uh, pencil holders, too. So we can hold some pencils in here, too. <laughs> that's awesome. Right? Yeah, make it useful. Why not? So it's sitting on my desk. <laughs> okay, so I've got a plant started to put in the one that I won from you, Tanya. Oh, did you? Would you put it like a little succulent in there or would you put? I haven't put anything in there. I'm starting it. You may get to show you. Oh, you're making one. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Let me see it. Okay, hang on. <laughs> I don't know. It's just something about taking a utility knife to a baby's head. It's just, I don't know. Maybe I got this mental block, you know, I was so excited to do it. And now when I actually have to do it, I'm like, I can't. Oh, I know it. Oh no. Is it a pineapple top? Yeah. Oh, that's genius. I love that's it. Awesome. I've got it in water right now and it looks like it's starting to grow some roots. So as soon as the roots get pretty good, um, I'm going to plant it in the, the one that I won from you. That is such a good idea. I buy fresh pineapple all the time during the summertime and I just throw it away. Yeah, I I'm totally going to save it. I actually watched a, because I've, I've tried to do this before and evidently I didn't do it right. But I watched a couple of uh, YouTube videos that showed how to do it. So that way it grows roots and it'll take root in the dirt. And they say just to cut it off and strip off of like a bunch of the bottom leaves that are closer to where the pineapple is, strip off a bunch of those and then just stick it in water and leave it in there. And then when the roots start to grow <clears throat> and they get, you know, pretty good size, then you just transplant it in the soil. Cause I've tried to do it too and I was not successful at it. So are you actually cutting off some of the, saving some of the yellow part of the pineapple when you put it in the water? No, you want to take all that off and then the, the like these lower um, leaves down here, you want to st okay. stripped off probably about four or five rows. Okay, I see what you're saying. Okay. See, see how that is? Okay. I don't know if you can see that. And then you just put it in an old jar. Are those roots already growing on there? Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, just a suggestion too, instead of cutting the top off, just grab it and twist it off and you'll already have a little bit of a. Oh, that's you know, good. Yeah. Yeah. Just twist them off. That's, that's a good way to do it. And then you're not cutting anything off. Yeah. I've never tried it that way. I'll have to, I'll have to give it a go. I'm hoping it's going to work. We'll see. <laughs> I'll update you next month. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Rhonda says sweet potato vine is pretty in them too. I'll have to give me some sweet potato. Mine always ends up dying. Yeah, like it doesn't yeah. last. Um, what's the word? It's not a perennial. Like it only lasts once. It just lasts for the year and then it dies. Right. It never comes back. You could even put like just some grass seed in there, couldn't you? And then you could, you know, cut it or. Oh yeah. Then you'll have my oh, look going. That's a good idea. <laughs> you know where you could buy some? Like you could buy like some. Um, what do they call that? Like. Um, Catnip they sell is that what that is that they sell at like Petco and PetSmart? Cat, yeah, it's like cat grass. Cat yeah. grass. That would be cool. Yeah. So now I want to go buy some plants. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs>
Yep. All right. So let's see. What else do we have to talk about? So are you guys doing any other crafts besides um, the, the doll heads or are you making anything else for the booth? Not me. I, I just, I'll tell you what, since I've started, uh, since I've started selling on Poshmark, between Poshmark and my booth, and now a little bit on eBay, I just don't have time. I don't, I don't pick up stuff that I really have to do anything to. If I have to do any major stuff to it, or, you know, <laughs> I'm out of crafting. I'm out of the crafting business. Yep. <laughs> it's very tempting to buy something that needs some work, uh, yep. or maybe even a lot of work, and you're like, oh, it's such a good price. But, you know, I, I stop myself and say, I, I got so much to do, you know, unless it's a simple, you know, cleaning it up or a simple touch up of some sort. I, I just can't, I can't put myself through that anymore. You know, know. there's so much to do and so little time. It's, it's just, I have to just tell myself, no, you know, somebody else will pick it up and somebody else will do something with it. But, you know, if it's a if it's a dollar or two or even five dollars and I can make a lot of money, but it takes a lot of work, it, it's going to sit. It's gonna, it's absolutely going to sit. And I just can't. It's still a waste of money at that point if I'm not reselling it. So I just I just stop right. myself a lot of times. I agree. And I've been doing that a lot, too. Like I wanted to buy um, a mirror the other day because I was going to spray paint it gold because I started collecting the smaller ones um, to hang on the wall. And I thought, well, how am I going to cover up that mirror part? And then it's just going to take me a long time. So I just, you know, you just have to pass sometimes. You just can't do everything. So. Yeah, I know. It's time is just uh, so limited and there's so much to do when you're picking up stuff that literally you take the price tag off, put another price tag on. I mean, even that takes a certain amount of time yeah. and you just have to know your limits I mean, there are people at my mall who redo furniture. That's like almost all they do. So, I mean, if that's your business, that's great. But trying to do everything that 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 we three do, and you know, do something extensively. Um, I mean, literally, about three years ago, I bought a, uh, a like a gramophone. What do you call it? like the old fashioned cases where you open up the, the mm -hmm. top, it's all wood, it's beautiful, but it's still in my basement. I got it, nobody wanted it in an auction. I paid $5 for it, but there it sits. Um, you know, I'm like, well, maybe I could, I could make it into, you know, like a, you know, like a, what do you call it? Like a wine stand thing. And I eventually probably will. But essentially that $5 is lost because it's just sitting there. It's taken up room, you know, so it's just one of those projects that it just, every time I go in my basement, it's waving from the corner. <laughs> hey, remember me, you know? So you really have to think about, you know, things that you're buying. And that comes into the whole being more selective on what you're purchasing. And I, every time I go out sourcing, I'm constantly trying to knock that into my head, be selective think about what you're buying. Don't just grab stuff because it looks like a really great price. Right. Yeah. I can agree with all of that for sure. Um, Rhonda gives a great tip here. She says, when you want to spray a, a mirror frame, paint on Vaseline on the surface you want to keep clean. Spray, let dry, then you can wipe off and clean the mirror and no paint there. Yay. That's a great tip. Thanks, Rhonda. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Rhonda. So we're going to be buying stuff we shouldn't buy. No, I'm just kidding. That's right. <laughs> I know. Oh, man. I just have stuff just staring at me in my house. And it's just, oh, it's it's a lot. It's a constant push-pull of should I buy it? Shouldn't I buy it? How much can I sell it for? What do I need to do for it? Should I just sell it as it is and let someone else have their project? Or I know I'll get more money, but it takes more time. It's It's a lot of just mentally figuring out stuff and it's it can it's exhausting sometimes right i agree and speaking of st stuff staring at you i think now's a good time to show this <laughs> uh oh <laughs> it's literally staring at you <laughs> so i picked up this beauty at a garage sale last weekend for ten dollars and um i just thought i'd show her to you guys i think she's awesome i think she's probably about at least two feet tall and I haven't done a ton of research on her, but I was telling the ladies before the show, I think I'm going to put her on eBay and I think I'm going to go high. Like I'm going to do probably 
$499 um, auction. So I don't waste a whole lot of time doing research, but that way, if she is worth something, at least I feel like, you know, auction would be the best uh, route for her. So yeah, I would, I would start there. And then if you don't get any nibbles, then go ahead and do it like a buy it now and wow. uh, maybe have it sit for a little bit doing buy it now and then maybe put best offer on it. And then as you know, offers come in, start fielding them. But she's beautiful. Yes, I love her. I think she's so pretty. I can't wait to list her. I'm gonna put her over here. She won't stand up straight now. It's it's very. Uh, we were kind of touched on that. That it was. Uh, it's kind of difficult to find uh, African American dolls and African American uh, specific type of items to sell. And the yeah. mall I'm at now um, is more diverse than the previous mall I was at. So if I find any, you know, carvings or artwork or anything that is African American or African styled, I do pick it up and uh, I have a certain area in my booth that I keep with, you know, African art and it does really well and people are very happy to find it. And I have repeat customers uh, who come back for it. So if that's something that your area would support, you think, then definitely, definitely pick it up. Yeah, I can agree with the fact it's definitely uh, more rare than like the, uh, the, the other, the white ones, the Caucasian ones. And definitely, I would say more collectible too, because there's not as many of them. And I, I think she's just beautiful. I love her. Like some of my friends were creeped out by her, but I think she's just beautiful. <laughs> I know whenever I bring a doll or certain type of items in, my husband goes, I hope that sells fast because <laughs> he doesn't want to look at it. And I'm like, I hope it sells fast too. <laughs> well, you know, she is very real looking and I'm not going to lie after I get her listed, she is going to the storage unit. <laughs> so is, is she designed more as a, like an adult or does she look more like childish in how she's made? I think she's definitely designed more like an adult, um, for sure. I mean, just look at her and look at her hands. And it's almost like, you know, and her hands are movable, but they're like, they're like porcelain. They're, you know, it's not just plastic. What would y'all do if she winked at you? <laughs> <laughs> I would end the call. <laughs> yes, you can. Bye -bye. <laughs> She would go flying up to the ceiling. <laughs> hey, you'd probably get more money for her if she did. <laughs> right. But yeah. And she came with this, these beautiful little butterfly earrings. That's when I knew I had to get her. I was like, oh, you're mine. And she came with a little um, necklace too. But I still have some more research to do. Like I haven't looked under her clothes yet or anything. But her hat says... Um, Riviera. Huh. So. Yep. Do your research. See, because I know it's funny whenever I do my videos, I always bring everything home and people are like, oh, it's this or it's that. I just kind of bring everything in and lay it out and do the video. So um, I, it's nice to have people and they comment because they usually can help. Maybe somebody will jump in. Yeah. Um, now or later on the video and say, uh, you know, if they know anything about it. I don't, I know yeah. so little about dolls. And she's got these cute little, look at these little shoes she's got on. Oh. <laughs> oh, those are cute. Oh, black socks. Yeah. So, I yeah. A, a recent uh, vintage haul where I went to my sister's father in law's house. They cleaned out his attic. And I did not look like because. You know, old stuff like that, I'm just not real good with because I haven't really sold a whole lot of it. A few things here and there, but like I bought a lot of stuff. And so when I did my video, I said, please, anybody, if you know anything about any of this stuff, please let me know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's amazing how much subscribers can help. Yeah, yeah I love I, it. When uh, they can I bought a, uh, it looked like a, like a real thin, long tapestry and it had like a brass fitting on the top and then one at the bottom to kind of weight it down. And somebody was telling me uh, that they believed it was a bell pull. And I was like, oh, wow. So I looked it up and this $2 item that I bought, it was just in last week's video, it's worth probably 70 to 
because of the oh, age wow. of the brat. Yeah, and I was like, I've seen these before, and I never knew that's what they were. And this one is, you know, quite old. Uh, so yeah, who knew? So I, I've seen these forever. I didn't know that's what they were. I didn't know that's what I, you know, need to put it on under, you know, an eBay or even at the booth for people to see it and they learn what it is. And I, I tell you, I'm a stickler for when I walk through and if I see somebody has something and it's mislabeled in their booth as to what it is, for some reason, it really irritates <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know why I picked up this one thing and it was a, a boot jack. Most people know what it is. And it was made out of like a heavy iron and it was designed like a lady with her, well, maybe not a lady with her legs in the air. And you put your heel in there to pull your boot off. Oh, and they had, they had, it was a doorstop and I was ready to go get a tag. And I'm like, that is not a doorstop. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know why that bothers me, but I'm sure because I don't know what everything is either. But, you know, it, it, in our game, we've been doing it so long, you could look at something. And even if you're not sure what it is, you can tell quality and you could tell it's probably worth something. So. Yes, definitely. Um, let's see. What else do we have to talk about? Um I don't have anything else. Oh, I know what else we can talk about. The questions in the group. Let me pull them up. Yeah, while you're doing that, I was thinking under the heading of summer strategies, with things being slow selling, there's not a whole lot you can do about that. But since this, for me, in my neck of the woods, and probably in Tam's too, that it's, you know, that garage sale is a season. It's yeah. only for a certain amount of time. And, you know, since things may be slowing down sales-wise, this is my acquiring time, my sourcing time to find things at a really great price and to put them away. And, you know, when you're at a garage sale and it's 95 degrees and there's Christmas stuff or there's pumpkins, I mean, there's a party that's like, I can't think about that now. But that's the best time to be picking up seasonal items and putting that stuff away. So my strategy is to maybe you know, con still concentrate on your booth, maybe other platforms you're selling on. This is a great time to, you know, work on your eBay inventory or Poshmark mm -hmm. or whatever you're doing and to acquire stuff at garage sales. Because if you play it right, you can have a lot of stuff that's going to last you into, you know, fall and winter. And uh, then you'll be able to use that inventory. And literally when you can buy something for a quarter or a dollar, I mean, that your profit margin is is way higher. So yeah. my mm -hmm. strategy is this is the time to, you know, like the squirrel putting away those nuts for winter time. That's what I'm out <laughs> doing is I'm out grabbing up stuff and putting it away. Yes, that's great advice. Definitely. Uh, yesterday I, I um, <laughs> worked on cleaning my closet out because I have like, um, uh-oh. Uh oh, she had a call. She'll be back. <laughs> anyway, I had a ton of stuff that I don't have listed on Poshmark yet because it's more winter stuff, and I kind of wanted to wait till it got closer to fall to list it. Yeah, I have, I guess, what you would call a death pile of Poshmark stuff. <laughs> yeah, and I have. I have collected so many purses for my antique booth and for Poshmark. So I cleaned out my closet so I could have more room to store some of my Poshmark inventory. And last night I told my husband, I said, you know, I remember back when I got my first coach purse. And back then I would have never thought to now that I would have so many coach purses. <laughs> yeah. Because I just have them lined up and I have them, you know, I have some of them listed on Poshmark. I have some of them that I need to list. I have some that need to go to my antique booth. Um, so, and they take up a lot of room. So I'm starting to kind of run out of room. <laughs> yeah, I have a, I have two literal, two plastic bins full of purses that I've done the research. <clears throat> I know exactly what I'm going to ask for them and they're ready for photos. And I just, every time I look at them, I'm like, oh, just, I got to do that. Yeah. But I put them, a lot of mine I put on eBay and I wanted to do a video on how I, you know, how I prep them and how I do photos for them. Yeah. 
yeah. because I know that's something that uh, I think a lot of people could really use. So that's something too that I need to do. But uh, I don't know. It's just, it's like anything else. It's just a matter of sitting down and doing it. Right. And then when you're done, you're like, oh, that wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. And I've had a few people ask me how to clean my coach purses and I want to do a video, but I really haven't found a coach purse that's really that dirty for me to be able to clean it. <laughs> yeah. Cause I stay away from a lot of purses that if they need a lot of work, I just, that's another thing I tell myself, I have so many, I'm going to find lots more in great condition. Yeah. It's not, it's not worth it. You know, yeah. it does take some time to, you know, it, it takes some time to clean the inside of them, you know, it just not really like manual, like they're all the time, but like spraying them and scrubbing them a little bit and then letting them dry. That's what takes the most. And then yeah. of course the outside conditioning and, you know, buying the conditioner to clean them up and stuff. So yeah, it does take some time. I'm trying to be a little bit more selective on my purses. So that way yeah. I find ones that are in good condition that I don't have to do a whole lot to that I can either just put them in the booth or, you know, list them up on posh or something like that. So, yeah. Plus I always, I always make sure that I check, um, you know, look in them, make sure there's no ink stains or anything that's going to be completely impossible to clean. Yeah. And then also checking all the zippers and the snaps. And, you know, I've had some, like I pick up a Vera Bradley and it's, you know, it's real cheap and it looks real good and it's pretty clean. I go to take that magnetic snap and uh, I open it and there's like a tear around where the other one is. And so it's just stuff like that, looking it over and making sure, you know, that it's in good working order because, you know, who's going to replace a zipper in a purse? I mean, that's just, it's not original. It's just not worth it. So, right. yeah, but it's, it's like anything else, you know, sometimes, I, I look at stuff and I, I, something something will get past me with a purse, with anything else. Um, and then I get it home and I'm like, oh, I was busy, you know, yapping away and totally missed this. And now I can't do anything with it. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can really got to pay attention. It's so easy to get distracted. And but I always either I always buy something that has a break as a chip already or I buy it, I get it home and somehow I broke it or chipped it before it got home. And it's like, no matter how careful I am, it's just, it's just one of those things. Yeah. And to, you know, what you were saying about <clears throat> this being the time for us to do sourcing, because, you know, mine and yours season, garage, you know, garage sale season isn't year round. And so that I've been going every single weekend, every weekend I've been yep. going out selling and trying to get, um, you know, as much as I possibly can before the garage sales, you know, end. Yeah. Even though you're in a little more of a milder, uh, place you can, I know you started earlier than me. Yeah. So, and you might go a little bit later than me. So yeah. And then I know Tanya, I mean, your garage sale season isn't even really this time of year, is it? Because it's like so hot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, People usually start shutting down garage sales around here about 10 just because it does get so hot. But, you know, we get started really early. It's daylight, what, by like, gosh, 630. So, um, yeah, by 10 o'clock, I mean, I know when I used to have garage sales, by 10 o'clock, 1030, I was done. I was absolutely exhausted by then, especially if your driveway uh, faces uh, the direct sunlight, right? So, um, yeah, around here, garage sales start usually about 9 o'clock. This year, I've noticed that there's probably maybe 15 to 20 percent that are starting at eight. So I've gotten a little bit of an earlier start than I usually do. But I know in other parts of the country, like even California and stuff, I know they start really early. What, Tam, what about your area? What time do your garage sales start usually? Um, they usually start no earlier than seven, but a lot of them start at seven o'clock. Wow. We must be lazy up here in Ohio. <laughs> I usually don't go that early. I usually try to leave the house maybe around seven thirty. So I probably miss on some of the deals, but yeah. yeah. 
You and know. since I go to so many garage sales, I've been at garage sales as late as two and three o'clock and people are like, oh, you should have got up earlier and got here earlier. I've, you know, a lot of the stuff sell that I'm like, you know, I almost want to smack somebody. I'm like, look, I've been to 40 some garage sales today. I can't be everywhere first. Yeah. <laughs> Or people will say to me, should you go early for, you know, better selection or should you go later for a better price? I'm like, when I'm doing 50 garage sales, I mean, I start early and I just go, you know, there's yeah. no, unless, unless something says something that I'm like, Ooh, I should probably stop there first or, you know, maybe make that right. a priority. But as far as being anywhere first, I can, you know, until they perfect cloning and I have a, a pudgy picker army that's able to just go out and grab, canvas the neighborhood. Right. It's not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Let's get to some of these questions real quick. Um, so Terry Wilmoth asked, what, what did you look for when deciding what mall to join? I'm considering a booth, but not sure what to look for since it seems like most malls here are hurting for customers. So I can't just look for amount of people visiting. Thanks. So I guess they're asking what was the deciding point uh, where we decided which mall we decided to go with. I think that's awesome that you have more than one choice. A lot of places yeah. you don't, yeah, you don't have that choice. Yeah. Um, what I would consider is um, where's the mall located? Our previous mall was not in a place where people just drove by and, Hey, look at that. Let's stop. Um, the place we're at now has a ton of uh, drive through, you know, people seeing it. It's a main street. It's uh, in a very dense area with a lot of people. Um, uh, consider how many days the mall is open. I know Tam's place is open, what, seven days a week? Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. mine, mine is closed on Mondays and Tuesdays. Uh, the previous mall was closed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, so what yeah, you can do is... On yeah. So, I mean, you figure a lot of mom and pop type places are closed at least one day. So you need to maybe uh, consider what would the rent be? I know the rent where I'm at now is a little bit more than where I was at before, but they're open more and they're open an extra hour every day. So uh, this is my, my totally anal retentive way of figuring <laughs> things, but I literally <laughs> sat down and figured out how much is the rent per hour that they're open because it was comparing apples and oranges. So I literally compared and it was literally like a few cents off. So yeah. you think, well, wow, it's more expensive to be there. Well, they're open later and they're open more days. So right. you got to kind of consider all of that. And uh, you know, or also the, do you have any obligations beyond rent? Do you have to work certain days? Uh, do you have to contribute in some way? That's an additional time. That's an additional resource. Uh, so weigh all those things before you decide where you want to go. And it's awesome you have a choice. Definitely. Because most places, most places, there's one or there's nothing. Right. Okay. And then we have uh, a two-parter from Lori Trelevin. Um, She asked, any ideas for enticing customers to, to step into the booth rather than just peering in from the aisle? What can we put in the back of the booth that would make the customer think, okay, I have to check this out? <laughs> um, I don't know. Like for me on my wall, I try to put like, I've started trying to put mirrors, like interesting mirrors. I feel like mirrors are always something great that people like to decorate with and that they're always looking for. So I've just tried to um, start buying more decorative, you know, elaborate gaudy mirrors. If I don't end up keeping them for myself, I love all that gaudy stuff. <laughs> But yeah, um, that's what I've been experimenting with. What about you guys? What's on your like main like focus walls? Well, on mine, uh, at the back of my booth, I have my clothing rack. And then beside that, I have a table. And then I have another table on top of that. Um, I try to display things in levels safely. <laughs> you know, <Sorry. laughs> my antique mom, she's very... Um, strict about that as far as like stacking stuff so they don't fall, you know, cause she doesn't want any lawsuits or anything. And yeah. Like, kill, if yeah. you kill a customer, that's kind of <laughs> that that's be a problem. business. It's like, I love you to come back, but you're not here anymore to do that. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I have things stacked on different levels. I try to, um, you know, 
kind of put things that are interesting or unique, um, have a unique look to them kind of towards the back or to the side. So that way, if you're walking by and you see something, you're thinking, oh, you know, what's that? And kind of, you know, draws people in. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing I can add to that is um, in the way that you arrange your booth, uh, your display pieces shouldn't be so tall or so uh, like have a back on them or be so dark that people can't even see to the back of the booth. And that that's a big challenge to be able to do that. I've seen booths where there's shelves, shelf, shelf, a little opening to get in to go to the rest of the booth. And uh, there's a lot of people who are not even going to bother to step in. So if you have, you know, an awesome piece in the back, it doesn't matter how awesome and how great of a price it is. If they're not going to see it, then they're not going to buy it. So if you have maybe shelving that has glass shelves or things that you can put in the front or lower pieces so you can see past them to higher pieces, you know, think about it. Think of your booth as a customer would. Right. You know, and if you have uh, booths in your mall that you walk by and, and you yourself never even bother to look in, you need to stop and say, why don't, why is that not intriguing to me? What about this booth is not inviting me into it? So, yeah. you know, always think like a customer. That's very important. That's great advice. You've been giving some really good advice today. Um, so let me see here. Uh, Medusa asks, Pudgy, what town is your shop in? Um, we are east of Cleveland in uh, what's called Willowick, Ohio. If you go to a Facebook and you type in Antiques and Uniques Ohio, it should pop right up. Uh, we put tons of pictures on Facebook. So there's literally probably 100 pictures a week. Uh, you can see the store hours and everything in there. So that's, uh, that's where it's located. The other one was much further uh, very, uh, not super close to the border of Pennsylvania, but more in a rural area. So it was a lot less uh, traffic. I think, um, our bar, our booth is, or our mall is half the size of the one I was in previously, which has its good and bad points. Um, where my booth was located. If you have such a huge mall, people are tired before they even get to your space. And so having a smaller mall seems to be, uh, a better, uh, better fit for me, I think, as a seller. Yeah, my mall is smaller too, and I like the fact that it's smaller because that way people don't get tired. You know, they go and they look and they can see every single booth. And then something else that you said, Jen, about putting pictures on Facebook, that's something else you might want to look at as far as choosing what kind of antique mall you want to have a booth in. You might want to ask them what kind of advertising do you do? You know, if, if they do, you know, if they have a Facebook page, if they post on Craigslist and, you know, different kind of platforms, that would be good too. Cause at least, you know, that, you know, Hey, they're doing advertising for this mall. So maybe there's a good amount of traffic in it. So and that's a real, yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. And another thing is you might want to find out if they have that software to where you can log in online and see what you sold. My mall doesn't have that. And I so wish they did. Yeah. I love it. I love that feature. Cause I check it every night. Yeah, see, we don't have where you can go in and check, but they send uh, they send your sales on Friday. So you get your Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then Saturday, Sunday, they send one on Sunday. So yeah, I'm able to look at what? that. Email? Huh? Like through email? Yeah. yeah, they send an email with sales, uh, you know, from when that check started to that particular day. So they send it out on Wednesday or on Friday and Sunday. So it's kind of nice to do that or if you can check because yeah. then you can see all oh, that huge picture that took up so much room on my wall sold. So I got to make sure I bring something out that'll fit in that space. So that's that's an awesome way to do it. So let me tell you guys what happened to me when I went to my booth last week. So I walked in and I asked for my report and the nice lady up there says, I saw a video. <laughs> uh oh. And um, I guess she saw my video, so I gave her a card, you know, and but now I feel like I don't have anything to hide anymore. So I don't know. Maybe I'll find out what the name of that software is and kind of bring it up about because we've talked talked about this before in the past about passing on the cost of that 
to the vendors, like whether it's, you know, just even five, three, five dollars a month that they have to pay if you want to have that feature available uh, to you. Yeah, um, I think I, I would totally pay it. I can tell you the software. It's called Mall Central. Mall Central? Mallcentral.com. Yeah. Yeah, because I think I'm not sure if ours is that one, but it's uh, it runs concurrent with the uh, actual software they use to you know track sales as they're going through the register. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what that is, but it is invaluable. And if you live more than you know a few minutes from your mall and yeah, you find out you you get there and you're like, holy crap, I had this much sold on the wall. And I didn't bring anything out with me, and I'm not coming out till next week. You're not making effective uh, use of your space, so it is Definitely. really a valuable tool. I agree. We'll let you all have an idea. <laughs> Wait, I, what's that, Tammy? I said I will let you all know an idea. Um, I think I told you told you this, Tanya, that I'm trying to come up with a new way to do an antique booth sales. Yes, I wrote that down. Yes, yes. I'm working with a couple different things, but what I decided to do, and I'm still working with it, is this last time when I went and put new stuff in my booth, I just went around and took pictures of everything, each section of my booth. Then when I look at Mall Central each night, what I'll do is I'll look and see what's sold. I'll go to the picture, and that's that's the thing that sold is in the picture. And then what I do is I'll just do a markup and I'll circle. And mm -hmm. so I've been circling everything in the pictures that sold. So that way I think it'll be easier for me to do a booth, a sales update that way. I don't oh, know. That's, that's working a with great you. idea. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah. You have some really good creative ideas for sales update videos for the antique booth for sure. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out the most efficient way to do it. <laughs> right. The fastest way, huh? Yeah. Because <laughs> the last one I did where I had to put all the pictures and do all the editing and all that stuff, I was like, that is totally not feasible for me. I'm going to have to think of something else. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes things can be just too time consuming. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's not like eBay where you can, you know, pull it up and say, there it is. There's all the pictures and here's what I sold it for. It's yeah. It's a harder way to do that. That's a great idea. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I guess we better get close to wrapping this up. Whose channel is this going to be on next? Damn. Go, um, <laughs> hey, I think your sister's in the chat, Jen. Oh, Kim, is she? Hi, Kim. Everybody say hi to Kim. Hi, Kim. She's probably working, so she's watching while she's working. <laughs> So she's an awesome partner. I we we coined this phrase when I did my uh, when we did our podcast is we call each other our booth buddies. So having a booth buddy is is a lot of fun, and it's you know we're working, but no, it's our girl time too. So do you we, guys have, I, go do ahead. have like a little um, tea room or anything like that in your booth in your mall where y'all can go eat at? Uh, yeah, we have a cafe, but usually uh, we go, we do our work, and then maybe sometimes we'll walk around and other times we'll go out to eat. So it's our girl time, and I tell you, I look forward to it every week. Oh, it's my so it's fun. my recharge. <laughs> so That's fun. Booth buddies are awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Tammy, we need a booth buddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, it's like that old toy, the Toy Story quote. If you don't have a moving buddy, get one. You should. If you don't have a booth buddy, you should get one. <laughs> um, okay, so it is June. So July's show will be on Tammy's channel. And be sure and join our Facebook groups called Antique Booth Talk uh, to find out what we'll be talking about and to get the show link and everything like that. And do you guys have anything you want to close with? Um, just, uh, yeah, just, uh, watch, watch my channel, please, please. Yes. Um, <laughs> go and subscribe to Jen and Tammy. Their, uh, channel links are, uh, the first items in the description box down below. And, um, please go and subscribe to them and support them. Yeah. Uh, they both have awesome content on antique booths. That's for sure. So. I'm coming up to almost 500 videos. If you can Ooh. believe that. Wow. 
Wow. Crazy. That is a ton of videos. Yep. That's crazy. New ideas for videos that I'm getting ready to come out with. Well, first of all, the, you know, sales update. And then my daughter's coming this weekend and she's probably going to want to go garage selling. So we'll probably go out this weekend and uh, do a little bit of filming, you know, for that. So oh, that'd be fun. And I am getting close to a thousand subscribers and I'm so excited. Yay! <laughs> awesome. That's awesome. All right. Yeah. Well, I want to say thank you to everybody for joining us, for joining us in the chat. Um, we love it when you guys um, stop by and hang out with us for this hour. And um, we will see you guys in July. Thanks for coming. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.